This session is going to focus on the operations that would be um, appropriate to use place value disc for for grades uh, four and five. One of the things in the standards, it says that in grade five, that you're to add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals to the hundreds. It doesn't really mention anything in fourth grade about doing any operations with decimals. It was just more focusing on the previous session of making sure that a kid could read and write those decimals to the hundreds and also be able to make comparisons. So I'm just combining this together because it's not gonna hurt anybody to see it. And I don't know, as an extension, fourth grade teachers may actually uh, go ahead and do add, subtract to the tenths. So here we go. Let's take a look at this problem. If I had 21 and 1 tenth, and I was going to add that to 32 and 5 tenths, and we were gonna be asking the kids to find the sum. Now here's a place value um, map, but again, you, you actually, there is a place value map that's available through EAI. I just drew mine on here because we didn't have one with us today. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to model this problem. So what is 21 and 1 tenth? Well, that is two tens, and I'll probably stack them. Then I've got one one, and I've got one tenth, okay? And I'm going to be joining this with three tens, and just ignore this number that's written down here for now. So there's three more tens. I'm gonna be putting down two more ones and then five more tenths. One of the things that's real interesting about a place value math is that big, big idea and, and big understanding in mathematics about moving to the left, this one is 10 times the number in this amount, or if you're moving to the right, this one is a 10th of this number. So these numbers would have to be the same, but that's a real important fact because that helps kids understand that the only time then that you would ever have any kind of regrouping is if you were able to accumulate 10 of these. And you can see, I don't have 10 of any of these discs in any one of these columns. So this is just a simple addition problem with no regrouping. So when I add 1 tenth and 5 tenths, there's my 5 tenth, there's my 1 tenth, how many tenths do I have? I have six of them, okay? When I add one one to two more ones, how many ones do I have? Two. Don't forget that decimal point. When I have two tens and I add three more tens, then I have five tens. There's nothing about this that changed from the very beginnings of whole numbers where you're looking at adding by place values. You're just simply counting the number of discs in each column or each place value column. Okay, let's take a look at a different one. What if we had 21 and three tenths and I wanted you to add this to um, six and 39 hundredths, okay? So let's clear our boards, okay? Now let's represent the first one, okay? So I have 21, and if again, if this bothers you, turn that back over where they see 21, 21, and notice that's the same thing as two tens and one, because remember, if I traded this one over here, I would need 10 more um, green discs. If I traded this one, it's 10 more. So 10 and 10 and one makes that 21. And we don't say two tens, one. We say 21. So there's 21, and then I had three tenths. Okay, so that's the first number. Now I'm joining it to six ones. One, two, three three, four, five, six, because I'm kind of wanting to hold that and build that 10 frame again. And then I have three tenths. So there was five, and I'll start back at the top to kind of fill that. Then I have nine hundredths. Well, thinking about nine hundredths, how does nine hundredths compare to 10 hundredths? Hopefully the kids will tell you, well, it's just one less. So if I'm building a 10 frame, then I know that I'm only gonna stop one away from that building of that 10 frame. 
okay? Now, if we're combining them, which I already basically put them all together, do you see 10 discs in any of the columns? Oh, I didn't build, I didn't build nine, y'all. Okay, we gotta start. Okay, so we didn't have any here. Oh yes, and we have nine here. That's, I did build nine. I don't know what I'm thinking. Okay, you can easily see. We do not have 10 of any one of these columns. So if we are adding by columns, then how many hundreds did I have? And here again, I know sometimes it helps kids to actually draw it out. We have hundreds. So I'm really just looking at this and you can see on the top, that's how what I knew. So I have nine hundreds. How many tenths do I have? I have three and three, which is why we see there's six. And then how many ones do I have? I had a one and then I had six more, which is five and two is seven. And then we have two tens. So this answer is 27 and 69 hundredths. And again, there was no regrouping with this whatsoever. Okay, so let's look at this problem. What if I change that one by one more tenth? Okay, so if I change that one by one more tenth, then that means I'm adding one more tenth. So how does that realistically change the answer, the sum? How, how does it work? Well, it's just one more tenth. The only place value that changed then was this number, and that six went to a seven. Again, I don't have 10 of anything in there, so there's no reason to any, do any kind of regrouping. Well, what if I said 21.31, which is 21 and 31 hundredths, and I was adding to it six and 39 hundredths. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take off this one because this is our, our 21 and 3 tenths. Okay, let's just remodel this one. This would probably be better. Let's just remodel it. Okay, so there's our 21, okay? And I need 3 tenths. So there's my 3 tenths. So I'm gonna take these tenths off. And then I have three more tenths. So here's my three more tenths. Okay. Then I have one one hundredth, and then I have nine. So that means I'm actually going to fill a whole 10 frame. Okay. So I also forgot that I had six ones here. So we've got to add in the six ones. Okay. So now this is how the problem ends up. This time, what we notice is we do have a bundle of 10. So remember that this bundle of 10, when it moves up, changes to one because this one was 10 times this amount. It took 10 of these to trade. So now what is this answer? We have two tens. We have five, six, seven. I don't know how I missed that one. We have seven ones. And we have five, six, seven tenths. So our answer is 27 and seven tenths. Okay, now let's take a look at a subtraction. So I'm going to empty this mat off. I'm going to start again, and we're just going to look at subtraction. Okay. What if we had this problem? 21 and three tenths, and I want you to take away... 13 and 2 tenths. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build our 21 and our 3 tenths. Okay, so there's the number we started with, which is our total. I want to take away 13 and 2 tenths. Okay, can I take away the 2 tenths? Yes, I can. So there's my 2 tenths is gone. And that leaves me with one-tenth, okay? Now can I take away three ones? And the answer is I don't have three ones. But remember, if I move this one to here, how many green discs do I get to add for that one yellow? That's right. I get to add a whole 10 frame, okay? So now 
I actually had the 10 plus the one, which makes the 11 ones. So now can I remove three? I sure can. And then can I remove this one 10? Yes, I can. So what does our answer end up? Our answer ends up being five, six, seven, eight ones and one tenth. So that's how you would do addition and subtraction. Let's try one more subtraction problem. Okay, so let's model this problem. So if we had 20, one, and four tenths, oh, that kind of moved around on me. Okay, so four tenths. Okay, so there's where our total was. That was our total number, 21 and four tenths. And I'm wanting to remove 11 and three tenths. Well, the first thing is, do I have enough tenths to remove three tenths? Yes, I do. So you just remove them. Now, this would be a great opportunity to say, well, what if this number was not a three? What if this number was an eight? Do I have enough to remove eight? I do not. So when you don't have enough to remove eight, I'm going to move this one over here. And when I have this light green, which was one, how many of these tenths is it gonna take for me to make up this one, it's gonna be 10 of them. So I get to make a whole 10 frame, okay? And I don't have enough of these out to make a 10 frame, but we would continue, oh, here's some more, but it's still not enough to make a 10 frame. Um, so I need, let's see, one, two, three more. Okay, and I'm not even sure you can even see these down here if it's going off this uh, film or not. Okay, so there was your 10 frame. So now that one goes away because what I did was I just took this one and I traded for this 10 frame. Now the thing says, now can I take away eight tenths? Well, yes, I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what I'm left with is six tenths. Okay, now it says, we're gonna take away one tenth. Do I even have one, I mean one one. Do I even have a one to take away? No, I don't. So this is where I need to think about, I'm going to trade for 10 ones. That one 10 is gonna trade for 10 ones because this takes 10 of these to make one of those. So now I've got it set up. So now can I take away one? I sure can. And then we're over here, and remember we regrouped, so we're good to go here. So let's take a look at this as a standard algorithm. If I had 21 and 4 tenths, and we were going to take away this, remember when we didn't have enough, we borrowed or we regrouped. We took this 10 and we traded it for 10, which is how we ended up with 14. And then when I removed those 8, I ended up with 6. Okay, but then I didn't have anything here. So I took one of those 10 and I moved it over here and traded for 10. And when I removed this one, I ended up with nine. And then can I remove this 10? The answer is yes. So our answer ends up being nine and six tenths. So that's how you would do basic addition and subtraction. That even showed you some examples of when you need to regroup. Some, if, if you don't have 10 of any in any column, in addition, you're not having to in, do any regrouping. Sometimes you will. And then the same thing in subtraction. If I don't have enough to subtract, that's when I'm, I'm trading to the right. And that pulls back in those number standards that helps kids understand that this place value is a tenth of this one, but this one is 10 times this one.